Welcome to Knife Thoughts. This video is going to be on these two knives from Rosecraft Blades, and these are two different versions of the French Broad Jack. And so the two versions here are Black Sandalwood and Rosewood. And I have only carried and used this one in part because I plan to do a giveaway with some Rosecraft Blade knives and wanted to keep one of them pretty pristine. And so first of all, I wanna thank Andy at Rosecraft Blades and also Austin at Traditional Pocket Knives uh, for facilitating this. I really enjoy getting to check out these Rosecraft Blades knives. Uh, I think they're doing really cool things. And this French broad pattern is one that's kind of different than what I have as a lot of my collection. Uh, so what is this pattern? So this is what I would call maybe a seahorse whittler or a serpentine whittler. Um, now it is a single blade. It's not a multi-blade like a lot of whittler uh, knives are, but it has the same type shape as, for example, the case seahorse whittler. So you've got a wider end here at the pivot, this serpentine curved shape, and then a smaller end here at the tip end of the, the blade well. And so uh, it's an interesting pattern. It has a single large full-sized Warncliffe blade for the blade. So like I say, it's not a, a whittler in the sense of having multiple blades, but it does have this nice big Warncliffe blade, which should be pretty good for whittling. Now, to be completely honest, I don't do a whole, whole lot of whittling. Um, didn't really do any with this knife, but I think it should work pretty well for that. Although it probably is a little bit larger than most uh, whittling blades. So I'll show you really my only other examples of knives in this type pattern. And those are the Great Eastern Cutlery number 38. So I actually have two different uh, Great Eastern Cutlery number 38s. They're both rendezvous specials, uh, but kind of different versions. So this one has three blades, as you can see. It's got a coping, a spear, or I'm sorry, a coping pen and this Warncliffe. So this is a smaller Warncliffe because of it being a multi-bladed knife. Um, and this is more of a kind of a classic whittler with the three blades, the two smaller blades, and a, a night not quite full-sized uh, Warncliffe blade. But then another example of the GEC number 38, and again, another rendezvous knife, this is a single blade version. So you can see it has kind of a Turkish clip. So a different blade shape, but a little bit more in line with the uh, kind of overall pattern of the French broad. So this, knife here is named after a river that is in North Carolina and Tennessee. A lot of the Rosecraft Blades knives are named after uh, rivers, streams, and, and kind of Tennessee landmarks. I honestly assumed that it wasn't, that it was just kind of like a nod to, you know, like it being a French pattern. I don't know that it is a French pattern in itself. Uh, it says on the website that it's inspired by a vintage pattern. Um, I don't, I would guess that it's not just because of the French knives that I do have. But there actually is a, a river called the French Broad River. Uh, so that's an interesting thing. I've learned more about um, Tennessee waterways here because of Rosecraft Blades, uh, which is, is always fun. You know, I uh, have visited Tennessee a time or two and uh, always enjoy it. But this knife, again, has a wider handle up towards the pivot and thinner down towards where the, the tip goes. So you can get kind of an interesting grip. It feels really good in a pinch grip. Um, you can see that my uh, pinky and ring finger kind of sit right in that upper curve, upward curve here at the end of the handle. And so it allows you to get a good grip, you know, for pull cuts, which I think is what this Warncliffe is gonna excel at. So things like cutting through cardboard, opening boxes, you know, I use this some for cutting food up for my son and things like that. Your general EDC task that I think most people do, a Warncliffe blade, you know, usually does a great job of them. Um, another thing with this upward turn here is that the tip sits nice and deep within the frame. And I always appreciate that. If you watch my channel, you know I really do not like proud tips. 
Uh, you're not going to have a proud tip with this. It sits nice and deep in the frame. And I also really don't like blade wrap, and you're not going to have blade wrap because it does have a stop pin. So two things that I do appreciate. Uh, this one has really nice walk and particularly talk. So sometimes the, the blade stops, the blade pin, uh, the stop pins kind of uh, dull the sound of them closing, but you can set here, this one sounds really nice. So really nice walk and talk, nice and solid. Um, these are super well made. That's one thing I've been really impressed by. Um, you know, no, no gaps on the back spring. Uh, very rarely are there gaps on the covers to the bolsters. This one is nicely done. Um, maybe a slight gap here at the edge, at the corner, but I mean, very, very slight. Uh, and the pins are all done nice and flush. The shield, although it doesn't seem to be pinned, which I, I would love it to be pinned, it is fit nicely. And this is the, the rose petal or the rosebud uh, shield that they use. And the wood on both of these is really nice. So again, this is the rosewood, and you can see I have a nice knot there, which I like. Uh, I really like the, the grain on this rosewood. Uh, it's actually what made me decide that this was the one I was gonna carry and use. Um, and I actually did carry and use this on the beach one day. Uh, it's D2 steel, so it's not technically stainless, but as long as you wipe it off, it's pretty good. So I like D2 as kind of a compromise for people who want a carbon steel, but you know, I prefer stainless steel. So I do like that. And then this black uh, sandalwood is an interesting thing. It's not something I'm super familiar with. It looks a lot like ebony to me. It's very dark. You can see some, you know, kind of brownness in it if you hit it, the, the light correctly. Now, I noticed that there's a little bit of maybe shrinkage. You can see that I can catch my thumbnail. That's something that has happened a lot on GEC made knives in ebony recently. Uh, I had three, uh, three knives that it happened on uh, from recent runs, and I know lots of other people that it's happened on. So for whatever reason, these darker woods seem like they do shrink, you know, relatively commonly. So you might have a little bit of that, but you can see I can just kind of barely catch my thumbnail. But otherwise, this one is also built really nicely. Got that nice big worn cliff. You can see they come with this sticker. In my first video on Rosecraft Blades, I talked about how I wished it didn't have that. I still contend that there's a little bit of kind of like a, a ghost uh, mark from that. Um, I'm sure I can make that go away, but just in my normal use, just like wiping it off with my thumb and stuff, it hasn't. I'm sure Flitz would take that off, you know, permanently, but just, you know, wiping it with my thumb, you can kind of see that mark a little bit. No huge deal, um, but that's how they mark that it's made in China, rather than being here on the actual tang stamp. Um, so uh, yeah, both really nicely made. Uh, I think that this is an interesting pattern. Like I say, different than a lot of the knives that I normally collect. Uh, I love Barlow's, kind of regular jacks and things like that. This being serpentine and having this big Warncliffe is a little different, but I, again, I think it's a great blade shape for normal EDC tasks like pull cuts, cutting boxes, tape, things like that. It has worked well for me. I, I think that they do a good job of their D2. I mean, for a long time, D2 has had like a negative, um, you know, perception, uh, particularly it seems like among Reddit knife enthusiasts. Uh, but for me, it's like at this point, pretty much everybody knows how to heat treat D2. You know, these are made overseas, but they're, they're heat treating it perfectly fine. They should be. And it has seemed to hold an edge well. I actually haven't needed to uh, sharpen it. I actually think I did touch it up once. I think I might have hit like a piece of metal with it or something. But, you know, holds an edge fine. It's going to cut well with the nice full grind. I like the swedge. Nice drawn swedge there. And just a, a really nice kind of different, interesting knife that will work well for EDC. It's a pretty good size. It's, I would say, medium to large uh, in its length, but it's pretty slender, so it's easy to carry. And just another nice knife from Rose, Rosecraft Blades. 
So if you enjoyed this video, I will have more videos on Rosecraft blades coming up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell and select all. Also go to knifethoughts.com, uh, subscribe to my email newsletter there. Uh, that's the best way to get all of the latest knife thoughts. And like I say, I do plan to do a giveaway of some Rosecraft blades. So that's how you'll best be able to hear about that. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.